Kingdom of the Rise of the Dawn of the War of the Planet of the Apes has been out for a few days now, so I thought I would talk about it in spoiler fashion. Ho 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 Tread lightly. First things first, I'm the realest. Drop this and let the whole world feel this. You should subscribe to the channel, Adam Does Movies, because I don't take it seriously, but I do take it seriously, all at the same time. Art is subjective. Movies aren't always necessarily art, but I'm always having a good time and giving you my honest opinions. Whether or not you agree with them, <laughs> that's up to you. But I'm still going to tell them either way. Okay, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. I enjoyed this movie. Didn't love it. But I liked it. Is it too long? Yeah, I think it's too long. Does it meander in places it doesn't need to? Sure, I think it does. And is the protagonist a little on the lame side? I think so. I think that's fair to say. Noah's no Caesar. Okay, we all know that. I don't think anybody's going to argue that Noah is not Caesar. Noah way, Noah shape, Noah form. But he's still a likable, pleasant protagonist. And it's his first of what will probably be a new trilogy. In fact, I think... The studio said they have plans for nine of these. I don't know if that meant nine in addition to the previous new trilogy. So we would have three plus one is four, five, six, seven, eight, five more. Or if that's nine with just this one. So we would have eight new ones left. How many more apes on horseback with guns can we watch? The answer is a million. All right, enough monkey business. What's going on in this movie? Well, the first 20 minutes follows Noah and his two friends. They, they have names, I'm sure. I don't know them. There's Girl Ape. There's Silly Boy Ape. They're flipping around in the trees, doing some cool Tony Hawk-esque parkour, and they're looking for the all-important, life-changing eagle eggs. I did not see that coming, Quicksilver from Age of Ultron. I certainly didn't expect them to go all-in on eagles in this film. <laughs> And it's kind of silly when you say it out loud and talk through it. I'm not really sure what the... I mean, I get the symbolic nature of it, but overall, it just felt a little bizarre to go from these heavy, like, solid entries with Caesar to then jumping 300 years into the future and we're looking for eagle eggs. That's, that's where it's all led to. It's all culminated to this point. Noah and friends have been swinging around all day hoping to get eggs for the coronation or some ceremony that they're doing so that they can become uh, I I don't I don't really know. I'm not sure. King king apes <laughs> hunter eagle ape scouts or <laughs> something whatever their merit badge is to collect all the eggs is what they need. Noah can't find one. There's only two there and they have to leave one behind. The dad said his dad, who's the king of the, the Eagle Apes tribe, that's probably not the official title, but I'm not sure what it is. He said that one needs to stay back so that, you know, the, the parent can raise it. They are stealing kids at the end of the day. They are stealing kids from their parent birds. These are not good apes is what I'm getting to. That's what this story is teaching me. Noah finds a gigantic nest high up. He's going to parkour up there. He's going to get it. This is the part of the movie that's telling us Noah's not afraid to take chances. Noah is a born leader, whether or not he has the confidence to believe it himself, which, spoiler, he doesn't. But he is going out on a limb. He is taking a chance. And yeah, there's going to be puns in here. On purpose and sometimes accidentally, but there's going to be puns. Okay, it gets, it gets pretty bananas up in here. <laughs> Subscribe. This whole sequence is pretty awesome. It looks great. Love the way that this thing is filmed. It's very visceral, very on your edge sort of stuff. My butt cheeks were fully clenched. You weren't even going to be able to crack an eagle egg in those suckers. That's how tight they were. I was waiting with bated breath. Thankfully, they make it home. Noah's going to talk to his mom. They have these cool tree houses that go way up. They're pretty awesome. He climbs up there into the eagle's nest. Quite literally, there's nests of eagles up there. And he talks to his dad, the Eagle King. God. I, li I like the movie, but this stuff, they went all in on eagles. Why'd you go all in on David Pumpkins? They went all in. I joked about this in my main review. But it's like Caesar died and one of the apes is just kind of walking away from the body going, All right. Who's with me when it comes to raising eagles as our pets? So we can use them as attack birds. Who's with me? Come on. 
I know it's controversial. Caesar didn't like it. I've had several conversations with him. He wasn't on board, but he's dead. He was the past. Eagles are the future. Who's with me? No one? You will be. You'll get on board eventually. On their journey back to the treehouse, I forgot to mention there was a character that they ran across. They called it an echo. We're not sure what it is right now, but I know it's that hot chick from uh, Witcher. I know it's the hot chick from The Witcher. She's in this. And she's kind of running around, scavenging things, then hiding back away into the tunnel where the echoes come from. What's an echo? Well, an echo is a human. An echo is a human. Why do they call them echoes? I have no idea. I don't think it's ever... Maybe because the tunnel echoes? Echo, echo. Oh, I bet that's why. That's probably why, and I was too dumb to figure it out at the time. We're going to go with that. This female Echo's name is May. She's going to be coming and going throughout this early half of the film, getting to Noah's way up in his business. Eventually, she's going to try to steal some fish, and that, that's no way to live a life. So he goes after her, follows her into the woods where he sees some fellow apes get killed at the hands of these horrible new tribesmen apes. We don't know where they're from, but one of them has been hitting the gym. This dude's huge. He's like the Dwayne the Rock Johnson of apes. He's the mountain from Game of Thrones in ape form. Noah realizes these guys are going to go after the rest of the tribe, so he hoofs it back, but he's too late. The place is on fire. Those awesome tree houses <laughs> up in flames. So he climbs up. He sees his dad. There's this awesome fight scene. It's really damn good. I was, again, the, the cheeks were so clenched. They were basically inside my stomach. I, I could do, I could do like reverse crunches. The Eagle King falls. He's killed. He's killed in front of his son, Noah. It's a, it's a tragedy. It's sad. I, I was very upset about it, but we have to move on. So Noah's left behind, presumably dead after falling like a million feet uh, onto the ground. Not sure how he didn't die, but he's fine. No broken bones or anything. The rest of the movie, he's going to be chasing after whatever this mysterious new tribe is. And he heard the name Caesar get uttered. Proximus Caesar, to be proximate. During his tracking expedition, he's going to fall into a pit where he meets another ape named Raka. This is the best character in the movie, so you know he's going to die before too much time goes by because he's so damn likable. He's dead before you know it. But he does introduce May and Noah. They have a nice little back and forth rapport. They give her some apples. They give her some clothing. They all become one kumbaya shit, kind of. May's still very sus on this whole situation. I don't think Noah's feeling her. She's certainly not feeling what he's got. They road trip it for a little while. They happen upon a river where there's some wildling humans drinking from the stream, kind of drinking zebra urine. There's a lot of zebras in the area. It's pretty gross to watch. It's a sad state of affairs what's happened to humans because most of them are extinct. Most of them that are left are dumb as a box of rocks. They're cavemen. But then you have May. She's one of the smart ones. Before she can judge what's happening in the stream, those evil apes come back. Dwayne the Rock Johnson apes there, netting people up, they're wrangling them up, and they go after May specifically because she sees she's able to dress herself, and she looks like Lara Croft. That ape's like, damn, that looks like the Tomb Raider herself. I must have her. I will find her! And they go after her. Noah has a cool scene where he's on horseback. <laughs> grabs her hand. <laughs> spins her around they're going through the weeds trying to find her it's all very visually splendid it's all cool and then we're gonna have a sequence not much later where they're gonna kill off Raka and then most of my excitement for this film goes with him that's right down the road they get ambushed on a bridge Raka is gonna take the blunt of the hit he goes down hanging onto a cargo net on the side of the water and then it's game over when it gets cut he goes down we don't see him die so I'm pretty positive he's not dead and then it was confirmed the next day when my buddy Bless texted me and said, Hey, Adam, you were right. Raka's not dead. They had an end credit sequence where he survived, I guess. Okay, well, it was obvious. If I don't see a body, I assume they're alive. That's just movie making 101. No one may maybe part of a fate worse than death, though, as they've been captured by King Proximus Caesar himself. We're pretty damn late in the game when this Caesar finally shows up, voiced by Kevin Durand. Very well done. I like his character. Wish I would have had more time with him. He is a sinister, evil villain. He wants all apes to work together for him, under him, controlled by him. And his big plan right now is to blow open some blast doors that promise ammunitions 
technology education on the other side. So that Proximus Caesar can rise up even quicker, get his plans enacted faster. It's at this point that William H. Macy randomly shows up. <laughs> He's the only other human to show up in the film that, that's like normal, intelligent. He's working for Proximus because he's useful. He has information. He's helping to educate this new evil Caesar, this warlord tyrant Caesar, so that he can enact his plans easier. May's not impressed at all. She's like, screw you, dude. Uh, I'm not taking part in any of this. Noah has some interactions with the king. It doesn't go very well, but eventually he's going to get to see his family again, his mother and his two friends. They're there. They're hanging out. I'm not entirely sure what they're doing. They don't show any real slave labor stuff going on. I imagine that that's kind of what's happening. But for the most part, they just seem to be lounging around, kind of kicking back, doing their own thing. May, like all women has secrets and she's a damn dirty liar she was lying to noah the whole time she knows all about this place inside there is a thing a device that she needs some sort of hard drive that has information on it that they can communicate with other humans so she's going to get into this place with caesar they know a super secret passageway up the side of the back of a mountain she's going to ride on his back they're going to go up there they get into this foundation that's got freaking tanks it's got machine guns it's got books it's got tech everything they need this has that good old-fashioned scene where may looks over and sees an arsenal a bunch of ar-15s some other cool weapons and you know she took something, but they don't show up. But it's alluded to. She gives a little glance over, a little peekaboo, and I know she's I know what she's cooking up there. Not long after she recovers the drive that she's there for, those blast doors open, and there are the villains right on the other side. Proximus was expecting them. What he wasn't expecting was for May to pull out a small revolver. You know, I took my son to this movie, Connor. He's 12, by the way, and he said to me, Dad, why? Why did she conceal a revolver? Why didn't she just grab like six regular machine guns? They don't know what guns are. They've never seen one. She could have just thrown a couple over her back, over her shoulders. And then just went... <laughs> it's true. Why did she conceal this tiny revolver that's got a max of six shots in it? Come on, lady. Ah, women... Anyway, she's actually very smart. She tricks them into this area. She jumps on higher land, which none of the other dumbass apes thought to do. She just seriously ran 15 feet in front of them and stood on a small cliff, like a small little hill, really. Blew up the dam. All the water rushes in and they all start drowning, except for May, who's outside just like having a picnic, watching this unfold. Caesar, Caesar and the other apes see her. Noah could have just ran to her, but no. They all go inside this massive military base. They're climbing all around the rafters, scaling the sides of things. There's a fight going on. That part's awesome. Because Dwayne the Ape Johnson's there. He's fighting with Noah, chasing him around. Noah plays the little game of hide and go fuck yourself. Gets out of a little crevice, trapping him down below. He drowns to death. Hmm. What a way to go. The rest of the apes make their way up top. It's a nice, beautiful, sunny day. Everyone's there. The tribe has made it out. The Eagle family is reunited once again. And there's Caesar! Holy crap, Caesar's still alive! He starts beating the living shit out of Noah. In front of literally the entire Eagle Ape tribe. Who does nothing. They just sit there like, oh, no, oh, oh. There's no invisible force field. There's no other villains holding them at bay. It's seriously just all of them watching Caesar beat the crap out of Noah. <laughs> looks up once in a while <laughs> no, uh, and the other ones are all like eh. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> no please stop you're killing him i never really liked the guy anyway this part was incredibly frustrating and don't give me some bullshit that caesar has beaten them down so much they're so submissive that they don't think they can stand up to him. There is an entire fleet of apes here. You're not telling me one could bum rush the guy and the rest could follow suit. It was incredibly frustrating. But thankfully Noah, who learned from his father how to call the eagle. There was an eagle that was like disrespecting him the whole film. He calls him. He's like. Mm -hmm. 
And you say, you only hear what you want to. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. Somebody once told me the world was gonna roll me. Caca! Caca! They start tearing at the, the Caesar. He's like, oh, 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 no, no, I just got a manicure. Oh, 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 not the face, not the face. This is how I make my money. And they claw his ass right off that cliff. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Bloop. Goes into the water, goes into the drink, and we don't see his body. He'll be back. Caesar will return once again to fight in the rise of the fall of the sequel of the sidequel of the prequel of another end of the Planet of the Apes Part 4. Teen. Hundred. They'll just keep making them. <laughs> I'll just keep watching them. The film winds down with all the apes back in their collective tree houses, rebuilding again, rebuilding anew with the help of the eagles, who are the protagonists of this whole movie. They're the real heroes of the film. Uh, Noah learned how to be commanding like his dad. That's why his eagle went to him eventually. And May shows up again, because May can just kind of like transport across time and space itself. This woman is very good at getting around. I don't know how she does it. She's there. She's got a gun behind her back, that same trusty revolver, because she's going to blow Noah's brains out, I guess, if he says one wrong thing. Thankfully, he doesn't. She bids him adieu. He asks her if he if she thinks that apes and humans could ever live together in harmony, and she's like, <laughs> eh, sure, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, probably not. Maybe. Bye. And that, that's it. Kind of hated her character. She's got some baggage to her name. Clearly, they're not going into it in this film. And that's the big problem I had with this movie. Even though there's some great set pieces, there's some great action, there's some good thrilling moments, and Noah's a likable character, there just wasn't enough meat on the bone for two and a half hours. I felt like a lot of stuff was left vague intentionally for future installments. I want to be fed now, not later. The movie ends with May going across the world, I guess. I don't know where the hell she went, but she's in the desert. She's all over the place. She goes to a secret facility. She hands over the recorder thing. They plug it in, and they're able to use the satellite dishes to communicate with other people that are still alive out there. It's pretty cool. May looks up at the stars. My son was wondering where she was sleeping for the night. I didn't know. I don't have an answer to any of this. She can find a tree to pitch a tent to or something. I'm not sure. The stars are out there, though, promising that there's going to be more people to fight these damn dirty apes in the future. Maybe we'll even get a, hello, hello, a signal up to an astronaut. Only time will tell. All right, let me know your thoughts on this movie. Hopefully you enjoyed this recap. I did the best I could off the top of my noodle. Let me know. Please like the video, comment, subscribe if you're new here. I post tons of movie content each and every week. would love to have you stick around. All right. Take care.